Arguably right now, the best way to play Sonic 1 on the go would be with the Christian Whitehead port for mobile phones, dedicated on capturing the nostalgia but tweaking it to include some welcome features, such as widescreen support, extra characters and so on. But imagine if we were still in the second half of the mid-2000s. Mobile gaming was nowhere near as big, and they weren't as powerful as today to emulate even the classic of retro home consoles. I mean, if I wanted to play Sonic 1 outside, what was I meant to do? Yeah, I didn't have the money for that. Enter Sonic 1 Genesis for the GBA. Actually, no, I can't bear to play that again. I reviewed this one before, and it was not pretty. Clunky controls, appalling physics, ear-deadening music, the list goes on. In fact, according to Metacritic, the game did so poorly that it got a lower rating than Sonic 06 did. And we all know how that turned out. But seriously, if you're a fan of this Genesis port, then that's fine by me. I respect your decision. But for me, it demonstrates that even the GBA couldn't handle the blast processing of the Genesis. Right? Well, Stealth, a developer behind Sonic Mania, tackled this question in 2007 by bringing the Sonic 1 ROM demo to the portable contraption. Apart from the noticeable screen crunch, this port was very well received by fans and the implementation was a ton better in comparison. It just feels like I'm playing a realistic port. But technically, we haven't found out yet if the GBA could really handle this. Most people emulated this ROM on their PCs. Which leads to the question, does it work on real hardware? Let's find out. Don't worry, I'm teasing you! While I will be testing this game out on a real GBA and GBA SP, I need to find a more sensible way of recording gameplay footage. And that's when this beautiful beast comes into play, the Game Boy Player. This contraption connects onto the base of the GameCube, so you have the capability to play your collection on the big screen. You can even utilise the handheld as a controller for that authentic experience. The best thing is that the Game Boy Player contains pure hardware from the GBA. So for this video, all gameplay footage will be coming from this system. And for the most part, I will also be testing Sonic 1 on the GBA and GBA SP off camera, just to double check that there's no anomalies. But for now, it's time for me to insert my EverDrive GBA into the player and begin. <laughs> The demo consists of the entirety of Green Hill Zone and Labyrinth still in its concept stage. Right off the bat, you may notice that the title screen's emblem and the HUD are a tad on the large side. This also goes for the score tallying up. This is because from what I can observe, no sprites have been resized. While this may be a controversial move, it remains faithful to the classic and is much easier on the eyes. Plus, with less scaling to do, little to zero lag is present. The engine occupied here is a huge improvement over the genuine game. It's near accurate that I was able to gain speed with the ease, obtain the Chaos Emeralds no problem, and eliminate any enemy within my path. Yet the physics aren't quite spot on, as I either collided with the wall here or overshot the group of rings, whereas on the Genesis, I would crash right into that gold mine. It would have been nice to have an auto demo to see how true the CPU could have controlled Sonic, but sadly, the total screen loops indefinitely. But what you can do is hold either A or B when pressing start, meaning you can select Tails or Knuckles respectively. Both Amigos have their characteristic abilities too, therefore you can fly on by as Tails or smash your way through as Knuckles. And while the certified game had the spin dash, at least here it's not janky in any way, now, this hack may have solved many situations that the retail game presented, but it's not all perfect. When Tails looks up, the ring graphics become corrupted, but immediately fixes itself. The entire background at the most random of times will flash a single framed glitch, and at one point, I managed to collapse a bridge that no longer had collision. I suspect it was because I took an injury just beforehand and the code struggled with all of those scattered rings, but walking away from the drama and then revisiting the place fixed the issue. Oh, so that's all I had to do. 
maybe I should come back to you and see if you're now sane. Ah, no, the tune, I just can't bear it! At least with Stealth Support, we get to enjoy the correct music. Although, due to different technical processes, you may notice distortion, especially within the ring sound effects. This is something that is hard, if impossible, to get around, and it may have been the reason why Sonic Team ordered the original game to have remixed melodies. It's a subjective decision, but I personally prefer to have the intended music, even if it is a bit noisy. There had been no game breaking bugs so far, and when I discovered that debug mode existed, I really tried to break the game, but alas, apart from the expected slowdown, it was all good. I am in awe with this conversion, and I am glad that Stealth took the time to show that it is indeed possible to get Sonic 1 to function properly on the handheld. The Game Boy Player, the GBA, or the GBA SP, except for the aforesaid nitpicks, I was delighted to experience whatever form I decided to go with, this ROM hack would comply. Does Sonic 1 GBA work on real hardware? Yes! This may have been a concept showcase, but I do wish this had been completed. It baffles me on how one man can make all of this work, however the official game that you had to pay for went down like a bag of sh salt. In my personal opinion, this is just better in every way, and if you have a flashcard for your Game Boy Advance, then I urge you to give it a go. And that's Sonic 1 on a Nintendo machine. Whew. Who would have thought to see Sonic 1? It's been ported as a Super Nintendo, but I don't even have any SNESs at all. Uh, eBay.com.